Hello and welcome everyone to the madness that is the new Austria patch and the Emperor DLC. If you have played the game a little bit in the new patch, you might have noticed a lot of new mechanics have some unforeseen side effects. There have been posts about AI revoking Privilegia in 1490 and even forming HRE in early 1500s. HRE is definitely something that will need to be tweaked a bit. But we are not here to talk about HRE today. We are looking at the new papacy mechanic and how it can now completely stop reformation without too much effort, really. I wouldn't even consider this an exploit, actually. So the new papacy screen has a few new things. There's the reform desire on top. There's the investing to become the next Curia controller and a button to pay tithes to the Curia treasury. Then there are the usual papal bonuses and the golden bull. Now, if you are the Curia controller, the interface looks slightly different. You can now see the golden balls, and you have another button here called Investigate Heresy, which decreases the reform desire for only 200 ducats from the Curia treasury. Not your own money, but the Curia treasury. So the method to stop reformation is simple really. Be the Curia controller and keep clicking the Investigate Heresy. The reformation can only fire when reform desire goes above 100%. So I decided to try this strategy just to see what happens out of curiosity. I started as the Pope as I think it might be the best way to ensure regular Curia control. Also the Papal States got a few buffs in the new patch that we'll discuss in a separate video. As Pope you can spend your own money to get Cardinals for yourself. You gain a bit of corruption, only 0.5 per click. And the cost of buying your own Cardinals increases as you get more Cardinals, although the cost isn't prohibitive at any point. Also you can only have a maximum of 7 Cardinals. In addition to this, you can also call the Ecumenical Council by contributing to the Curia Treasury, and this also increases the chance of becoming the next Curia Controller. Keep in mind though, you can only improve the chances, so you will likely have somewhere around 50-60% to chance of becoming the Curia Controller at any point, which means there's a good chance that you won't be the Curia Controller. So it's important that you buy down the Reform Desire anytime we are the Controller. And I kept doing that throughout my playthrough. I only got to be the Curia controller three times in the first 70 years or so. And still I was able to keep the reform desire down to zero. It's really not rocket science. You just keep trying to be the controller, keep investing money in it. And whenever you are the controller, keep buying down the reform desire. Every time you buy the reform desire, the cost of it doesn't increase actually. However, the reform desire now grows faster, but that growth is not enough in my opinion. And I was able to play a fairly normal game with Papal States, despite putting a lot of money into becoming the Curia controller. So my questions about what happens when the reformation never spawns were answered in this playthrough. First of all, no reformation spawn means no trigger for Age of Discovery to end. So the Age of Discovery will last in perpetuity. Yes, it will actually last throughout the game, which is hilarious in itself. The institutions will spawn on time, I had the printing press spawn and then the global trade, but the age did not change. And even when global trade spawned, absolutism mechanic doesn't activate, because it's still Age of Discovery in 1600s. So you can just keep going and play the whole game with these limited mechanics. Next I got curious as to what happens when global trade is already here and the reformation spawns. Would it actually just skip the age of reformation altogether and go directly to the age of absolutism? And so I let reformation spawn and it happened in 1627 which started the 10 year timer on when age of discovery would end. Couple of years later the Diet of Wien happened in my game and Catholic became the official religion of the empire. After 10 years, Age of Reformation did start actually. However, it was instantly followed by the next 10 year timer to start the Age of Absolutism. So we did see the Age of Reformation, but only for 10 years. And now we know that's what happens when the Age of Discovery lasts beyond global trade institution spawn. So stopping the reformation is certainly possible in game now. However, does it actually give us anything? In my opinion, not really. I think we actually miss out on a ton of game mechanics that are related to reformation, league wars, and age of reformation. It might make for an interesting playthrough if you can start as a major nation and try to do a one faith Catholic. Maybe. It should be easier on paper as you don't have any heretics. Well, except Hussites, but Bohemia in my game stayed Catholic. Another big thing to look at are the age bonuses. If Age of Discovery never ends, Ottomans will have 33% siege ability all game, which is a bit scary. Venice can rule the trade in Mediterranean, Portugal can be a colonial powerhouse, and actually all colonial nations will get a significant buff. A major side effect of not having heretics made the HRE in my game super powerful, and the wars against them were actually hard as the Papal State. 
Another setback is that when you are investing money to become the Curia controller, you aren't investing that money into economy buildings or upgrading centers of trade. So your economy won't be as good. But starting as papal state, I had most of Italy so money wasn't really a big problem. I think starting as Castile and trying the same strategy might work better as you have more places to expand into. Also this was me just playing a single player game and I managed to stop reformation without breaking a sweat. In multiplayer games you can 100% stop reformation if everyone decides to do it, that's going to be super easy. And once again, this isn't even an exploit, it's the game mechanic working as intended. I definitely think this will get patched pretty soon though. I think the easiest way is increasing the cost to investigate heresy every time it's clicked, or increasing the reform desired growth even more, or even decreasing the contributions to Curia Treasury. Or maybe the devs don't think it needs patching because the game is still working and you are just missing out on a bunch of game mechanics. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I just wanted to share this funny strategy I found in the new patch with you all. Tell me if you have more ideas on how stopping reformation might change the gameplay. Which other aspect of game would now be different without reformation? Let me know in comments. I look forward to hearing all your ideas. That's it from my side for now. You are watching a Radiator's Guide. Thank you for your time and I'll see you all in the next one.